라디오가 특히 느려요. So this one looks like one of those verbs, slow or something. But a radio being slow. 특히 느려요. So what do you make of 그의? That one's 그의? is. Radio is slow. Especially 특히. Do you know what this took comes from? Good grief. Uh, off the top of my head. Let me show you. Oh, for me. Top of my head to the bottom of my heart. H Q G D I. There it is. Meaning like especially special. 좋은 호텔. 좋은 호텔. 매우 작은 것은 무엇이에요? 매우. Hmm. 매우 작은 것은 무엇이? Mm -hmm. 무엇이에요? 매우. 매우. Very small thing. What's the last part mean, Levi? 무엇이, 무엇이에요? Uh, this 무엇 is, a, 무엇 is a contraction of 무엇 plus 것. Very good. So what thing? What thing? It? Exactly right. So, you want to try the meaning of the whole? Let's see. 작은 것 is a small thing. So what is 매우? Very. 매우. Very. So the very small thing, what thing is it? So what is that very small thing? What is the very small thing? Like, I think so. What is the very small thing? 그 여자가 정말 예뻐요. 정말, 그 여자가 정말 예뻐요. 정말. 정말. Now comes the fun part. I get to write it. 정. And do you know what this chung is? Mean, for this chung mal meaning true. Uh, uh, that's not what I want to neighbor. Is the mal meaning spoken? Like you spoke a true thing, maybe? Language. I don't know about the first part. The mal is Korean, chung is M Y L M. Chung. Chung. I don't think we've seen this much in our Chinese lessons. 한국어는 제일 쉬운 언어가 아닙니다. 한국어는 제일 쉬운 쉬운 언어가 아닙니다. Well, that looks familiar. Is that, oh, that's the one in uh, Hunmin Jong Un. There it is. Yep, it sure is means right in uh, both a verb and an and a noun that which is right correct true jung called in chinese good 한국어는 제일 쉬운 언어가 아닙니다 so it's noteworthy to me that we've got the ga onoga with the copula which would never happen in japanese 아닙니다 언어가 쉬운 easy most easy 왜 would Japanese not allow ga there? Uh, the complement of the copula never gets it is the base is one way to look at it and another way is desu de gozaimasu de aru da they already have that de particle so it would conflict with the ga. You can't have de and ga co-occurring. Okay. Make sense? It's not that mm -hmm. copula is not really a single word, but a fusion across a boundary there. It incorporates a particle. Okay. It's right de aru, you say, with aru as the actual mm -hmm. verb root to exist.
나쁜 게 But since Korean doesn't have a randomly fused onto the verb, we're allowed to put a. The copula seems to be the a true verb root. 나쁜 게 한국 딸기는 아주 맛있습니다. 한국 딸기는 아주 맛있습니다. 아주 신과일. 아주 신과일. Okay, this she is. It looks like it could be SK. 신. There's many 신 syllables. But this has a morphine boundary in it. 시다 is one of the flavor words, but I forget which. Do you remember? Is it bitter? 시다. Could be, yeah. Uh... Sour, maybe? I think it's sour. Let me look it up. Oh. 신. It is sour. 신 sour. How can we remember that? It's got an S. 저 새는 나쁜 새다. 저 새는 나쁜 새다. 나쁜 새다. 저 새는 나쁜 새다. This is interesting. 새는 What meaning do you get out of this? 저 새는 Oh, you're on the next one. 저 새는 나쁜 새다. 저 아이 I don't think it is, because I would not appear just on a phone, it would have a particle with it. Right, it would have some, either a possessive, in which case it's a deposit, or it's going to be 저는 저를 or something. This is the pointing word 저. Yeah, I'm guessing it's a... Yonder. Uh, one of the Kosoado ones. Mm -hmm. The furthest away, yon. Uh, okay. Uh... 나쁜 나쁜 새다. Yeah. 나쁜 is from 나쁘다, which means no. 나쁘다 is busy with uh -huh. my other ones. 나쁘다, 나쁘다. This is a bad one. Bad. Okay. 새는 uh, 뭐? That far away says. That far away say. What does it say? Is bad. The verb matches the noun. Indeed. Isn't that curious? What does a say as a noun? Uh, it's not coming to me. It's a bird. An okay is a dog. Wait, a year? It's a bird, I think. Tenen. And we've lost the syllable in the, in the final verb there. I think it should be say either. That's my take on it, yeah. Oh, it looks like it means to bird. <laughs> what does it actually mean? That bird is a bad bird. Okay. It's birding badly. No, it doesn't mean that. I think it's like syncopated from se ida. Maybe because the e is already there in the noun. In that diphthong. Mm. 그 파스타는 정말 맛없어요. But that's an interesting one. Maybe we should ask Lisa about that sometime. Well, write it down so you have it. I'm on it. To ask her about. Mm -hmm. Lest you forget. Lest. Napun se. Da. Got it. 그 파스타는 정말 맛 맛없어요. The taste is ab. Taste is absent. 파스타는 this pasta really the taste is absent. So except, it's not very good. Except not this, but that. Oh, that. Cool. Oh, the first one is E, right? E, 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 Going furthest, uh, go closest to furthest. Cho nun, here we have I. Pizza ru, aju choa hamnida.
불고기는 제일 좋은 음식이에요. 불고기는 제일 좋은 음식인 음식이에요. 음식이에요. How would you translate this one? Uh, I'm sure it'll be a second or two. Mm. Tiki again, Jimmy is so. I just uh, really like. Oh, wait, no. That's not the one you wanted me to train. So you want, was it? The I like pizza one? Don't know anymore. I've moved on, I'm afraid. Okay. I'm afraid. Okay. That one, yeah. 저는 제일 긴 길에 살아요. You sound like you're even more ahead of that. Indeed I am. 우체기 길에 Oh, it's that tukki verb that we saw before. But not a or verb. Not verb. Yeah. Uh, what is it? The <laughs> thing that modifies a Verb or verb phrase or adjective. What is that called? Adverb. That would be the word. 그의 라디오가 특히 느려요. 그의 라디오가 특히 느려요. Feels forever ago. Especially. It's slow. Okay. Papa. -pa. 111. A triple one day. Welcome to Lango Institute, everyone. I'm your verb ally, joined today by Levi on Discord. And let me just mention, Hello. just mention all the languages that you can study with us. We've got a new term starting the day after tomorrow. Our languages are English, Over Korean, tomorrow. indeed, English, Korean, Spanish, Chinese, French, German, Japanese, Portuguese, Italian. Seems like a random order, but that's the order in which we started teaching them. That's how I wrote that. Okay, let us turn to German. And I've been doing, of course, a bit more thinking about those derivations. So, or do you have any comments or questions to start with? Uh, I guess I'd like... Maybe you to just start with a little intro for anyone who's watching. Okay, yeah. Knew what it is you are doing with German grammar. For that isn't us. an excellent suggestion. What we're trying to do, Levi and I, sort of in collaboration, is come up with a real compact set of rules that, tell, that remind us how German works, how the inflection goes, and the sound changes that happen when we derive new words from existing words. And when we derive, when we inflect verbs, that kind of thing. Maybe some notes on syntax too. So, notes on German grammar, uh, as compressed as we can get it, and then they will allow us to derive words correctly when all the rules apply in the proper order. So right now we're kind of at the conjectural, what do you call that phase when you're just starting out? I feel like there's a term. Brainstorming. Bit. Yeah, kind of a brainstormy phrase phase of work and so the the way that it works is like a computer program slowly going through looking at each each stage of our derivation and applying a new rule uh i've been meaning to ask did there, i've seen like a word game i wonder if you know the name of it where you start with a given word say it's five letters long like i don't know eater or something and then you up replace one letter per line, and then four lines later, you end up with a different five-letter word that has no letters in common. But at each stage, you have an existing word. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I do know what you mean. I don't know the name of it either. Okay. But, but what could it be? Eater and later, and then... <sighs> this isn't a terribly promising example, but you get the idea. Yeah, I'd like to find out what that is called, because this kind of derivation that we do... Is a little similar to that, at least superficial. Okay, what was what were some I want? Let's talk about unglaublich first. What are our pieces? What will they be called? What what are the inputs? 
the first step in a derivation is we identify the ingredients that we're going to bake together <laughs> into a new word. So I count three. We will I need. Uh, we will need unglaub. Is that a single thing? Which though? means unbelieve. Is that a single thing or more than one? I don't know. Let's apply our. Let's turn our brains on a bit. Is unglaub meaningful? Okay. Uh, probably not. Um, probably not. So we need un for not, glaub for believe, and leash. That's right. Adverb. So I'm not right. putting it in. Good. I agree. We have those three parts. Actually, though, before we get into this one, maybe we should look at one where umlaut does occur. Because the point with this one is that umlaut is blocked. Oh, goodness. Feline. Nappen koyangi yeyo. But let's look at now. Let's start with Unglo. Like, let's just do this one. So, from the sutra I added yesterday, I noticed that. Do you have them handy? The ones on the vowels? Let's start with that. Let's see. Let's... Yeah, let me just get them pulled up. Uh -huh. Vocale. For zwei Vokalen. Okay, maybe something like unbetont. For zwei consonanten oder unbetont kurz. Okay, but, yeah. For zwei consonanten oder unbetont, comma, we could say, kurz, very elliptical, and then sonst lang, right? Mm -hmm. And so thinking on that, it made me realize the Lich that I had been spelling with a double consonant, because it's short, it's never lengthened, we can skip that, because this is not going to be a betont a betont is it a bit. So, uh, let's which of these ones will be betoned? That will be something we have to take care Love. of. For now, let's just mark it. Yeah, maybe that can be our line too. So the first change we're going to apply is we're adding betonum with this little accent mark here. No, I don't think so. Glaub at the beginning. Why am I spelling it with a W? You might ask. Uh, because it's a diphthong. Uh, you're skipping out, I'm afraid. Say again, please. It's a diphthong, uh, so you have uh, it as a segment, like two vowels in sequence, or except w a vowel is and a consonant, the a and the w. Kind of, except w is not a, not a vowel. I said a vowel and a consonant. Oh, okay, yeah. Then it's not a diphthong. Yeah, I corrected myself. Okay, okay. I see. We'll spell it with a U later. It'll be a rewrite rule. Or that's just the spelling that we kind of added as a note. Unglaublich. So let's choose. Normally what would happen if you have an E, this E consonant, is it would palatalize the group of consonants on either side. We would get a, we're going to get a Xia to the right of it. And we might expect it to be Gloib. Okay, let's do a quick second side derivation. Do you know the word for... An adjective that means having having religious faith. Here's the ingredients. Glaub, the same verb stem, meaning believe, and ig. What does that give us? Let's derive this one. Glaube. Exactly. There we have the umlaut happening. So, which of these is betont? In glaube, uh, glaube. Yeah, in this one. Could be the uh, Gloib, Glaub, exactly. I guess, originally. Yeah, Glaub, Gloib, that's the one. Not Never the ending in German, that's nice and handy. So, the E, the power quality of the vowel E, we have rule, we were, we're going to have rules that say it's in an unaccented syllable and a suffix across a morphine boundary, it's gonna, that Y quality is going to spread. And this isn't the, the real J like we have in Ya and so on. Because it's, it doesn't take up space. It's just a sort of feature floating out there. It doesn't make a consonant group heavy when we add it. So maybe it, ultimately a different symbol from the regular J. I'm going to omit the accent mark that just repeats. 
but the Janus spreads to either it side of the It could be maybe like, maybe like a superscript J or something. Exactly, something like that. Maybe one of my runes. Let me get my Futh oh, ready. Oh, another good idea. Let's just see which one would be. There is a J rune. Yeah. What's our form? Okay, I want the other one. The Elder Futhark. The uh, looks like this. Kind of a nice symbol. And for the next one, for Unglaublich, let's let's think about what rune we would want to add to block the spread of Yadicity. Right, the Janus. Okay, so now the J has spread from that suffix. The Ig has become Yig. And the J has now jumped. It's on both sides of the B. It's also affecting the G, but I don't think I'm going to mark that here. Do you remember how I, what my next step will be in the other derivations we've looked at? Ow, A, W, J cannot stand. Yeah, that becomes Oi. Exactly. So the A and the W, they fuse into a single segment, but the J now stays. So in some, if we choose the super, some sort of super segmental J, it's going to come down onto the line. Gloibyik. And that's going to depalatalize. So, uh, yeah, from the third line to the fourth, maybe let's number these. There's a merge action that happens. Certain groups of sounds where relevant will fuse into one. Maybe for the G, we could say it's really a Y here. Something like this. Then line five. We're almost done. We're going to depalatalize after line four. So that gives us. Let's do two steps. Okay, the this J after B is going to go, and the last one is going to devoice because it's word final. So, whatever changes that it's devoicing. Yeah, some details still need to be worked out, but let's put the actual spelling of the thing. Oh, I have a question. Please. So usually, like the palatal fricative, the sh sound is regarded as an allone of the velar one, k. But here we have a different velar sound, this g. And but you still say like it would be gloibi. You can. Like this one it, is also the palatal fricative at the end. It depends on your on your idiolect. Okay. Some speakers will have a K sound, devoicing of the stop. But I feel the H is a nice natural one, and that is called neutralization, when two different underlying sounds show up as the same thing. Now, unlike the umlaut that okay. we have, have in Gläubig, with Glaub and Lich, with Un and Lich on either side, we've got something to block. Any suggestions for my blocking rune? Uh... Where does it go? I would put it... Does it go on the stem? And if so, how does it only block for leash and not for each? Uh, we will need a rule to specify. But, That's what rules do. Okay. So where do we want to put the blocking it, rule? I'm going to put it in between. I don't think it's... I wouldn't put it on the stem itself because we see that it didn't happen with Gloibik. Just in this... Derivation. It's not going to be the only derivation where it's blocked, but in certain words, it is blocked. Okay. Uh, but when we would memorize this word, would we notice it with blocking rune, or where Sorry, would we that. encounter the blocking rune? If we, how would we know to add it in this case, or is it part to, of one of our words? A rule has to tell us that. Okay. I guess you don't need a rune for it, but let's just, for fun, let's add it. I'm just going to choose the okay. very first one. I'm going to choose the F rune for this, for fun. So, okay. after this unglaublich stage, some rule will come in to say, it'll specify a set of pairings where, 
oops, not that, where umlaut does not take place. It is blocked. We could say there's a ya here and here. But this sort of thing. Oh, and you can do that. Uh, sort of respectively, so you can you can do all the glaub and then the other stems and then leash and all the other suffixes. Question or what? What are you saying? Uh, let me think about how to phrase it better and get back to you on that one. Sounds good. Unglaublich. Then comes our depalatalized stage. So this was line three, line four. What needs to happen here? You're gone. Uh. Jx is not a permitted Physical. sequence. Gonna palatalize the ch to a sh. Is globlish itself an acceptable word? Not known to me. Okay. Let's see if Wiktionary knows it. It's a good question to ask. It's always a good thing to be on the lookout for. So what's uh, oh? It's a bit like English sensical. Do you know a word sensical? I do not. I know a word nonsensical. Yeah. Sensible, but that's a different one. Glaublich. Hmm. Oh, look, it exists. So we could just have a rule that says between glaub and lich. Whenever in the grammar somewhere where we're discussing lich, we're going to say that the palatality doesn't spread onto glaub. And maybe we could have a list of stems where that where that is true unglaublich so having merged the pal having palatalized the to here we can then depalatalize everything else and we're almost done that gives us this nice word unglaublich i don't think i've encountered unglaublich do we have a citation for it unglaublich this might be what's called a ghost but duden has it that's a very authoritative dictionary Häufigkeit. Häufig. Uh -huh, it's in the lowest word frequency class. Seltener als einmal in einer Million Wortformen. Wortformen des Dudenkorpus belegt. Can you translate this for us, Levi? Uh, putting it in the chat just to see. Uh, it's coming. Voila. Okay. Das Wort ist durchschnittlich seltener als einmal in einer Million Wortform des Dudenkorpus belegt. Uh, belegt, you might not be familiar with, it means attested. Some nice German. Durch, that's an interesting one too. Durch, that I have with a palatal, this RCH in the prefix here, durchschnittlich. Even though there's no palatal vowel nearby, it's next to an R, my dialect always has a palatal sh, not durch, although that does exist in some, for some speakers. Bedeutung. Es ist kaum glaublich. Okay, this, this does actually seem good. We have it with kaum. What is kaum? Okay, I'm asking you too much at a time. Let's not do that. What are the other ones I said we should look at? Größe Hitze is an interesting one. Let's get that one ready. So I've been rethinking that if suffix, maybe I'll keep the thorn, but really what I want it to be is palatal e, giving us a third palatal morphophoneme. And here we're going to see a stem change. Heiss means hot. 
NMLZ means nominalizer. So the meaning resulting from these is heat. This is the word for heat. Heiss is the basic adjective. We're going to have to have some, and that's the one that's stressed. Betont, line two, just tells us where the accent's going to be. It's at the front, as usual. Line okay, three. that's what I know so far. I don't know the all of the words in this through sentence. Cut, through Cutley, average, on average. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, then one. What is Zeltna? Zeltna. I guess it's different than Zelbst, right? That's kind of what I thought of, but yeah. Different than what? I'm not sure. Well, it is also um, a comparative form of an adjective, so Zelten. Yeah, really more of an adverb. Zelten is seldom. Oh, I should have guessed that. Well, you need to know well, that M often corresponds to N in German. Boden and bottom there also have it. But we don't really inflect adverbs as much like this, but it's perfectly natural for German. Zelten as einmal, then what is einmal, zweimal, dreimal? Uh, una vez. Oh, uh, dos veces. Like, I hear it sometimes like time or like mm -hmm. instance or something. That's it. Like, einmal is like once. One time, yeah. So, once. In a million word form. So, on average? Forms. Yeah. On average, the word is attested less frequently than once per million words in the Duden corpus. You got it. Seldomer. So, than Seldomer, yeah. one in a million word forms in the corpus attested. Got it. Indeed. So if you have a German notebook, I would write down Durchschnitt and this nice derivative, Durchschnittlich, Selten and Mal. Hold on to those. They're all very useful for high frequency words. Sehr gut. Okay, now on Heiss. So I've re spelled this derivational affix from the if. Maybe I'll just keep the th the thorn for fun. I like to look at it, thorn, just to identify it. But really, it needs to be a nasalized vowel. I think that's how I'm feeling since yesterday. And now we need a special rule to tell us when heis combines with ith. We're going to replace ice with its. And I'm going to class that as a double consonant. It's a, it's a. Yeah, I'll spell it this way for now. I hope it's not too ugly on here. I would like to get the T with a superscript S. Do you know a website where I can generate that conveniently? Mm. No. Let me think about it. I'll look into it. Alrighty. C. And then not too much more not too much else needs to happen. Our depalatalizing step is gonna turn an unaccented E into E. So pretty much the same thing, just a down step there, and we're basically done. This is the word hitze. Oh, Reichstag is a good one. Do you know what the Reichstag is? Uh, or was? Remind me. Sounds familiar. Uh, the Parliament. Oh, yes. Uh, wait, then what is uh, Bundesrat? Well, one is pre- Third Reich, and the other is post. Okay. But what I want to say about Reichstag is that the, the two ingredients in the first instance are just Reich and Tag. And for fun, I like to add the aspirate to show that, that one could be aspirated. Here it might not. Reichstag. You know, it will be, I think. Because why G and not K? 
because when we have a suffix, an inflectional suffix on tag, tage, tagis, it is voiced. And so that's the underlying form. Hey, Mapenzi Mubashara. It's going good. How about you? Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. I'm going to guess that this is a name from Africa. Is that correct? Just doing a bit of German. Is it a Swahili name? Hang on, Twitch. Okay, for Reichstag, why am I not including the S? What do you think? Uh, well, it's got to come in at some point. Indeed. But I don't know that it's in. It's not in either of those stems when they occur exactly on right. their own. Yes, something else I've kind of been... Swahili, excellent. What does it mean? Uh, the ma prefix, and is there a mu? The mu looks like it might be love is beautiful. That's right, my benzi. Benda. Oh, interesting. We've got a sound change. Make it look beautiful. <laughs> Very nice. I don't need to type it. It's an excellent meaning for a name. Shorthand. Uh, yeah, right. The S is not really part of the stem of the first word or the second. Oh, and so what I was starting to say that one thing I'm not really sure of handling is why is it or how, how to treat the S, the spelling S in, in words like Straße and Spiel and so on, where they palatalize. Right now I'm just putting in it, putting them in as a sh, not deriving it by rule. And in Reichstag, that shift doesn't happen. It does not sound good to say Reichstag. Started to learn Spanish. Norwegian. Excellent. Maybe we can do yeah. Would be not too out of the way to do a bit of Norwegian. If you're game, Levi. No objection. Yeah. Okay. I think we should uh, before we uh, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Uh, Spanish and or Norwegian. That's right. Um, my question is, do you have any objection to us doing some Norwegian? I do not. Super. Let's do that after Reichstag. Okay, so, my, yeah, my point is, even though in other cases, Straße or something like Stiel even, you can have it optionally, the S in Reichstag is not going to palatalize. So line two, which of these components in this compound We'll have the stress, Levi. The first one. Exactly. So let's mark that. That's line two. That's what's added there. In a noun plus noun compound, it's always going to be accented on the first, I feel, for German. Although, hmm, I wonder if there's any exceptions. But we need a rule now that's going to tell us that an increment comes in. I don't, it sounds like that genitive marker, the possessive suffix, but I don't want to say that it's that because it's not really the place for genitive marking in the middle of a word, right? So mm -hmm. I'm going to treat that as an increment. So what marker what will I put increment? on this increment? Is it... Right. Does it go at the beginning of talk? I think better to regard it as at the end of Reich. So I, I feel that way as well. Yeah. You agree? So that's what the yeah, there's a lot of compound words that do that, I believe. Yes, there are quite a few. Another one in between components is N, such as... Well, what's another compound? Hmm. Backpfeifengesicht. Do you know this nice word? Mm -hmm. What's it mean? I do, yes. Oh, yeah, because it's Pfeife and it exactly. adds this N. That's right. The N in the middle there. What is Kesk say back five from Gesicht? Oh, I don't know how to say it in English. 
um, let's see, the, like, it's, you punch someone in the face. It's not a punch, it's a slap. Oh, okay, slap. Uh, it's like, it means, a f it doesn't mean that you punch someone or slap someone. Yeah, it's, German has a very good question there, my pansy. Uh, German is very fond of long compounds, even compounds of compounds. Backpfeife, piece by piece, it means cheek whistle. <laughs> so it's a slap that makes a noise. Uh, a good translation for the whole word, Backpfeife in Gesicht, would be a face that calls out for uh, sla for slapping. <laughs> that is an excellent mm -hmm. question. It is just a long compound. The only, yeah. Inflected words don't ever get this long. It's really just one or two suffixes, and that's it added to a stem. I can tell you're linguistically somewhat knowledgeable. It's very welcome here. What we're doing on this channel, if it's your first time, uh, is trying to learn all the languages that Duolingo teaches, and we've recently started doing Sanskrit and Egyptian. But we'll do Norwegian next. So we're almost done with Reichstag. Reichstag. Now, does the S potentially de-aspirate like we have in English? Not so sure. What else needs to happen before we can call this form complete, Levi? This derivation, rather. Did we uh, devoice the end? That needs to happen. Very good. And one other thing, we don't say Reich, but Reich. This diff. Oh, palatal. This, the one diphthong, yeah, is a palatal diphthong. So we're going to replace that. Let's go ahead and do those two changes in one step, because why not? No one can stop us. We'll be taken care of by different rules. Talk. And we're done. And the spelling, it's a noun, so it gets a capital initial. Reichs talk. It's the same word as day, but it can also mean parliament. Not stark. Let me just add, it, add that as a note. We're not going to get a sh in this environment. The suk increment never palatalizes. Where's my sh? Oh, the s hot chick. I'll just use a dollar sign. Sh. Have you studied linguistics, my pansy? Or just read a lot about it? And another question I want to ask you is what leads you to be interested in Norwegian? We'll do some comparisons with German, since Levi is an ardent Germanist. Brown. Lis. Wow, what's that? Ein Blomst. Blomst. What an interesting formation. What's the German cognate of Blomst? I have to see it. I think so. We will. It's a common. Wait for one moment. Blomst. It means flower. Oh. I can just tell you. Oh, a Blume. Blume. Not umlaut, but u. Background. Blume. Yeah. Blume. Brun. Brun. This one is fronted, it's spelled with just you. Grun. Oh, that's what Lys means. Fargerik. Fargerik. Farbenreich, if it were a German compound. Lys. Lys. Study linguistics. Okay. Picked up the meaning of polysynthetic from an Inuit woman. Oh, right. she's telling me about her language. Kalalisut. All right, but more than most, perhaps. What are you particularly curious about uh, about the structure of language in general, or Norwegian and Spanish in particular? There? In particular. Broren min har et brunt skjerf. Broren min. Let's hear that. Broren min har et brunt skjerf. Okay, Broren. Spell it with an e there, but it's just a reduced syllable. Broren min har et brunt skjerf. Broren min har et brunt skjerf. Skjerf. So one thing you might potentially stumble over when you're learning Norwegian is why do we write a K, S-K-J, that's called palatalization. So when a sound like E or Y changes the position and the articulation, well one of the same thing, the articulation of a consonant or even a vowel. So a skjerf cluster in the older language has just shifted a bit. Skjerf. Broren min har et brunt skjerf. Skjerf. K is written, but not heard as a K anymore. Levi, what is Brur Min, that first phrase? Levi, are you there? Yeah. 
Oh, I found Sorry. a website that can get you a super script. Oh, super. A script, a super script to give a super script. Do share when you get the chance. Okay, let me type it out. Why not just copy the, in the chat? You, why not just copy the URL? Oh, uh, because I found it on my on phone. phone. I see. That is a good and reason. So I can. Yes. Fargerik. Fargerik. Now, this G does not palatalize, but in Swedish it would. Swedish is closely related. Quite a few Norwegian friends. It's an excellent reason. Like Scandinavian culture. Want to travel in Norway. Yep. I agree with all that. <laughs> I agree that you have Norwegian friends, but I find it an interesting place too. I would also like to go there. California. Okay. Where do you live now, if you don't mind sharing? Don't feel like you have to. Levi and I are both in Texas. I'm in Dallas. Gren. Gren. It's interesting. Long end there. Tanzania. Excellent. Never been there. I did have a chance to. I'm learning Swahili, of course, because Duolingo teaches it. And many years ago, got to learn a bit of Chichewa with, uh, from a speaker from Malawi. But I haven't been to Africa yet myself. Do you know any other African languages? A flower and bloom. And blomst. Blomst. This O has not raised. Thank you, Levi. Welcome. Script generator. And any directions here? Oh, it just. You just type the letter and, and then it will give you the superscript version of that letter. There we go. Excellent. Or you can put a hold. Uh, kind of trailed off there. I didn't hear the last thing you said. Uh, if you put in like a whole sentence, it will gotcha. give you a whole sentence in superscript. Nice. So here yeah. is how I want. Hitza to look, and it's here. The rule says replace rhyme of stem. It's kind of a one-off rule. And blomst. Jeg viser dem blomster. One thing to take note of with Norwegian is the lilt to it. The unaccented syllables have a much higher tone on them. Jeg viser dem blomster. Blomster on that final word we hear at the clearest, but also v sir. They're reduced vowel, not an e, but ir. V sir. Den blomster. I'm still working on Swahili. B2. Not very easy. Well, good luck with it. I find it a really beautiful language. I love the shared prefixes that unite the nouns, verbs, and adjectives. I wish more languages were like that. Jeg viser. Den blomster. The dem is interesting. Jeg viser den blomster. It looks like I see the flower, I guess. Viser dem. Those. Blomster. Plural. I see. Viser. Showing. There's a causative of see. I cause to see. I show the flowers. Those flowers. Them. Two different participants. <laughs> That's why an M. Okay. Dim. It's to them. I show them flowers. Tiny bit of Zulu. Oh, that's neat. Er kjolen fargerik? I've learned that sometime. Er kjolen? I think I know fargerik. one word in Zulu. Is it Vubuzela? Uh, no, it's Ubuntu. That one, yeah. Which I think is also the word in Ulsa. Hmm. And it means like friendship or something. Uh, humanity. The abstract okay, quality the one, yep. of humans. It's also the name of a Linux distribution package. It's the one I use as it happens. But though not on this device mm. that I'm using now. Er kjolen fargerik? Er kjolen fargerik. So a reduced syllable here, not kjolen with an e, but kjolen. Okay. Er kjolen fargerik? Fargerik. And listen to the different uh, pitches on those vowels. Fargerik. Er kjolen. This one kjolen. is the dress. Is the dress. Kjolen. Fluent, maybe five, four or five, I guess. That's a high bar. I don't know. How about you, Levi? How many languages are you fluent in? It's the dress. Oh, 
As a student of linguistics, I've learned bits and pieces of a larger number, but it's far from being fluent in that many. Maybe three-ish. Three I can communicate pretty well in English, German, and Spanish, Same. but I do know kind of some stuff and many others. All right. Levi's a very apt student on all 40 of these languages, or close to, and he's learned quite a bit of Chinese and Japanese the last few years, as well as Korean, but not for me. Um, and some French, too. And one thing I want to point out about Norwegian here is the article, the meaning of the, the definite marker, is in this Solen. Solen. on the noun. Hun har svarte sko. Sko. You want to give this one a try, Levi? Hun har svarte sko. We have cognates. Hun is she, but the rest we all have, we have cognates for. Hun har svarte sko. Okay, as soon as I see it. Sounds good. I'm still seeing Erhjulen Fargari. Shulen, yeah. That qualifies us too. Svarte sko. Hun har svarte sko. Hun har svarte sko. Hun har, Hun har svarte sko. She has a black uh, skirt. Mm, skirt is not mm -hmm. this word. That would have an RT, I think, if it were cognate. This one is closer oh. in English. Although ours doesn't have a K. Oh. What do you think? Yes, we should have... Sure. Sure. Well, shoes. Shoe, yes. It is black shoes. I believe it's plural. Sockene er svarte og grønne. Sockene er... Okay, the E-N-E -E -N -E ending on the noun means plural definite. The socks... Sockene er svarte og grønne. Svarte. Svarte. Og. Og. Og means and. Grønne. 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 We can hear that lilt very clearly on... The individual words like that. Sockene er svarte og grønne. Svarte og grønne. The socks are black and green. Kvinnen i hvitt. Kvinnen i hvitt. Mm. Kvinnen, the reduced second syllable. I means in. Kvinn is related to, kvinne is related to queen, but it means just woman. And this is the woman, when it ends in n. The woman in white. Our WH corresponds to the HV. Jeg liker brunt og grønt. You can see how closely English and Norwegian are related. Jeg liker brunt og grønt. Jeg liker brunt og grønt. Brunt og grønt. The brun is long, even though it's got two syllables following. The T's there, brunt, grønt, are agreement markers. That tells us these are neuter gender. Jeg liker brunt og grønt. Jeg liker brunt og grønt. Jeg liker brunt og grønt. I like uh, brown and green. Hvor er den grønne hatten? Hvor er den grønne hatten? Where are the... Grønne... Green... Hats. Hatten. Or is it singular? It's singular. Where is the green hat? The verb doesn't tell us. It's always er throughout the present. Where is the green hat? Hatten, I always want to, things ending in N, I'm tempted to put a plural, because in German and Dutch, that's how you, that's one way, one common way to mark plural, but in the, Nor the Norse languages, it's the definite. Barna leser en fargerik bok. Barna leser en fargerik bok. Barna leser en fargerik bok. The children, barna. It's an exception to the E-N-E -E definite plural, just an A at the end. Looks like barn, but it means one who has been born, meaning a child. Jeg liker lyse farger. Jeg liker lyse farger. Jeg liker lyse farger. Lyse farger. Jeg is I like light colors. Osten er lysegul. Levi, do you have the... What's it called? The... I've forgotten already. Sejong text ready to go. Oh, uh, I have it. Super. I've got it in one of my browsers, or I did, I thought I did. Could you share the link, please? Yep, link. Link. 
Oh, what I don't have is the specific page we were on. We'll find it. Thank you. Oost is cheese. The cheese is light yellow. Oost is cheese. What does the blue blomster mean? What does the blue blomster mean? Tyr, I don't recognize. But yellow flowers? What could be who? What does the blue blomster mean? Okay. What do yellow flowers mean? Kind of an odd question. Betude. I want to find out more. I'm intrigued. Betude. Where is Wiktionary? What's going to be the infinitive? Betude. Betude. Oh, it's uh, bedoite. What's that word? It is indeed. It's an irregular correspondence because. Oh, so what is the, what does what do German D there, after the prefix, and Norse T, what do those reflect? What is the proto? Well, it says it's modeled after Middle Low German, but what would it have been if this word existed in Germanic? Can you tell? Uh, I don't know. Maybe a thorn. Yeah, exactly. A thorn. Do you know the word for thanks in Norse? It's just ah. thank. Thank. Yeah, this would be a thud or a thud or something. What do you mean? Bedeuten. Beduden. No entry. Har dere svarte kopper? Kopper. Har dere svarte kopper? Do they have black? Cups? Har dere svarte kopper? Or it could be like, oh, these uh, flowers symbolize something. Like, I oh, we so. have these yes. red flowers to celebrate longevity. Oh, what do yellow flowers mean? I agree. Now, like that. do you know that the German be. cognate of this kopper for cups? It's shifted its meaning in German. Ah, my pansy has added a comment on that too. What do your flowers mean in a metaphorical way? Talking about poetry, yeah, that's right. There would make a bit more a bit more sense than in everyday use. Kind of the wrong domain for meaning. Otherwise, yeah, if it's a gift, I suppose, or an offering of some kind, it could have a meaning, cultural meaning. Very true. Kopf is what it what corresponds oh. in German. It has shifted from a cup to a head. Mm. Wow. With affrication. Vi liker hvitt kjøtt. Vi liker hvitt kjøtt. I think it's we like white meat. Vi liker hvitt kjøtt. The woman in white, which we saw earlier. Uh, the woman. And it's definite. Kvinnen. Spelling. What was the word in? It was just one letter. And then, I think just one T. Hvitt. Vit double T, or else it would be silent. Kvinn i vit is the dress, colorful. Er solen far ge rik. Solen far ge rik. The woman in white. Kvinn double N, E, N, E, vit. Kvinn i vit. Now we're going to look at a Korean Chinese text that we started on the day before yesterday. How do Levi? How do I get to the page, to the other pages? I I sent the link. Oh, click the first. Uh, first, uh, first thing bullet. that says Sejong e uh, like, Sejong e -je. I think it's all -je. -je. Yeah. Uh, okay. Indeed. Okay. Yeah. Xinji, er, yeah, 
we got as far as yeah, this one. Okay, we're ready for the next page. This could be continuing the sentence. Wait a minute. Huh? Uh, we're not quite to that yet. We ended on... Uh, we didn't do the right-hand page of the previous... Oh, there you are. Yes, you are quite one. right. Yeah, I did. That's right. I'm thinking the wrong order there. Good. Okay. Yeah, so it's a little confusing that it's going right to left, but then the pages are left to right. All right. So either look up method you like. Let's just go one by one through it. But I'll tell you the reading is the very first word there in that fourth column. Okay, the next two might be hard to find. But you got it, yeah. So. Yeah, I was worried about finding those. I had some difficulty earlier right. when I was okay. looking for them. Good. But I'll tell you what, I'll get the next three, those numbers. Say again, please. What'd you say? Hello? I'll put, uh, if you can get those two. Hello? Okay, get those two. Uh -huh. Hello, can you hear me? I, I can hear you fine. Yeah. Uh, then I can finish out the page with right. the numbers and the... Uh, uh, on Sounds the end. like a winner. The way is next. Okay, there's that uh, vertical mark. It's not a han zi. Way starts with a dot I. Got a crossing K N F. Should I put it in the chat too or just in my notes? I can put it all in the notes in the chat. As I pick them, should I put them in the chat or just notes? Uh, please in the chat so I can collect them and put them in the Google Doc. Okay, I'll I'll send it all through once we get it assembled too. But way is the next one, and then C Y. And P. Wei Tsu. Wei meaning on behalf of, and Tsu this or these. Wei Yu Wei Tsu. Okay, and then can you get the next one after oh, that? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I was looking at the last line. Hang on, we're in the middle line though. Yes. Uh, yeah, you're jumping ahead there. We're yeah, about the middle I of the have center. Mean Ryan. Good. Wait, it's a mean Ryan. And that was like anxiously, or what was it? Let me pick it up again. Oh, wow. That one looks way different. When you say that one, what do you mean? Uh, let's see, you, uh, it has, it ends with the uh, katakana he. E or he? And Sorry, it which seems one? like it just has one horizontal line, the way it's handwritten in the book. But printed, it seems to have many distinct horizontal lines. Have we entered it in the chat yet or not? Yeah, I see it in the chat. That's what I'm comparing to uh, in the book. Uh, One, two, the third character down in the middle column on the right-hand side. Oh, there is a slight it's a horizontal variance. line with a bunch of vertical things. It looks kind of like I was saying it looks like the horizontal line is shared between all the components in the handwritten form, oh, but see. not in the, I know the computer about. form. Right. Okay. We do have variant forms. So my the horizontal one's so the left component of that in the standard form that's now now used is G, which is Y L M. This one. And the right side is just 
HU, I guess. No, how do I get that? UH. There. Here's the two pieces. Put them together, and it's YMP. Not that one, no. YMP, this one. Is this what you're talking about in my character generator? Uh, what about it? Is this oh, the one you mean? I'm putting this character. Uh, it looks kind of it's... like that. Yeah, it's a very... That's the left-hand component. Okay, oh, you haven't input the P yet. Okay. Yep. All right, so after the Ran, then we got two... Before we get to Arshibatsu, there's two up in the corner. The top left yes, corner. Yes, those were the two that I previously mentioned having difficulty finding. Oh, well, the top one is Shin. Does that help? Yes. Okay. I'll get the one below it. I'll get number two there. Oh, the second most common Shin... I just, it was a little small, and I didn't know all the pieces on the left. Could be a new sentence, I suppose. Yeah, likely the new sentence. Xin ji, or new clause at least. G H B, I guess? I don't know that I know how to input this. And then HML. Nope, that's not it. It is H L H M L. Nope. Huh. Okay, let me try something else. And then oh, you put you Arshibatsu. That's odd. Arshibatsu. And I want to look up this. Ji. H B. Oops. L and L. Oh, yeah, I was way off. <laughs> Wrong character. That's what H B is correct. L and G to produce, to manufacture. Xin G, Zi. And is that the end of that page? As far as the Hanja? Yes. Then we get to. All right. Un sera. The se being new. Preserved for xin. Ji. The reading is given. J. Non. That could be a topic marker. Okay, I'm going to go back to the proceeding. Xin. It's given. Right, the very bottom character. It's a recapping of the Chinese sentence. Xin for reading, and then it's then we have this un marker, which I think became un and nun for the topic. Sera that gives the meaning nu. Next one, ji reading is j nun non. Ming or mi go ro shil shil shira. Oh, you know what that that final ra there looks like a quotative marker telling that that's the meaning. Then it gives us the, the hanja for two, and the reading is Z. Ten, the reading is okay. Sip, uh, with a gem in it. And for eight, Pal, look at that! It had a non-aspirate initial, but then it writes the coda, L-H. Palun, Shi Mul, Ya Dul, Pira. With the middle China, middle Korean numeral for twenty-eight. Sera Mi or Ming Mi, I think. Go 
No knee. Okay, the next line, you ready, Levi? Uh, yes. Yeah. Maybe there's a meaning of bien as a noun that I'm not familiar with. It's O N L K. So let me look it up. Definitions. Serve the interests of, yeah. Probably not any of these. Gun, I guess. Ha or all. Oh, that's a. Uh -huh. And then for u, it's got z i l h. Zillion. Mm. And then z Zil. for r. Mm -hmm. uh, Isn't that cool? Oh wow! Uh, I never thought that the and person. And you think that. Eung at the end is so zero uh, and uh, what zero just nothing yeah I suppose it could be a tone mark but it seems to not correspond to a single tone oh. but I th well let me just as you're are you making progress on getting these or oh uh yeah. <laughs> Very convincing. Okay. I'm just going to glance over what we've done so far. There is, seems to be no Hanja transliteration that lacks a coda. So I think it's a placeholder zero. Yeah. Well, let me get my Q Hanja. As, that way I can just draw them. As you wish. Do you want, what? Uh huh. Sang. We do also have Yun Yu Tong Munja. I can't find any Hanja that just have no Pachim. They all seem to have one. Very interesting. Isn't it? I wouldn't have guessed that. I also wouldn't have thought that the person at one stage was Zin. I never put that together. Zhan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see it. It's also nice that the triangle mimics the shape of Zhan. So I want... Is that on the left? Is there something different on the right? You can just go one by one. Yes, that's what I'm doing. I see. I do that. Okay, let me try again. Yeah, it's not giving me what I need. Let's try J input. How would okay. it break down? I figured out the left half of this. The hundred that I am looking for goes C O R Good. on the left. Uh -huh. uh, we can only allow two, so C R. True. And then the right hand element, I don't know. Ah, N O. Okay. C R N O. Get it. Let's try it. Well, that looks different. Well, that will happen. 
That's the one. Make sure I found the right one. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, Cham. Really? Cham. There it is. U means wish, want, desire. Japanese hoshi. Okay. Now I saw you type this next one. So you clearly have it. Today have it or through. some other time? Uh, yeah, like maybe five minutes ago. I don't believe I did. Uh, I typed. No, you I didn't. It was not the dictionary. It was no. It was a different one. I've still got it there. This is different. It has oh. some common strokes in it, but this is different. Oh. In fact, it's got it as a link. See also that. They're really just one different in strokes by one number. So we'll see them here side by side. Well, also, the alignment is different. Omchong. Oh, what's that? Omchong. Overly. Ramyeon은. Omchong. 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 I wonder if this om is. Sign of Korean. Let me know if you need help. Yeah, I guess I am having a tough time. Okay. Getting then. these. Here. All right. Can you just pronounce it for me? She. Oh, that's this is gonna be the easiest because then I can just input it in pinyin and find it. Um, there we go. There it is. Well, okay, now we get it. She means to cause, to make, to allow, to let. She. E she. And this um chong. Ren ren. You do run run. You should ren ren to make everybody. If you want to make everybody. Shen ren. Then we have a few hangul marks. It's oro. That be probably became uro. Should I pronounce the next one, or do you want to write Please it? Please do, yes. It's pronounced E. 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 Okay. It is in the name there of the is. E. Sure Ding. The Book of Changes is this E. There it is. It also means easy. E. Yeah, easy. and it has that circle at the end, uh -huh. even though it is... It's a zero sign, no coda. Yeah. Do you know the next one? Okay. After ye. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is not the one that I just put. This is different. This might be the one you looked up. Uh, there's one below e before we get to the next column. There's a hanja there before oh. e. Okay, that's the two on. feathers in the day, right? Uh, actually, white below. Shall I pronounce it? Uh, yes. Xi, xue xi de xi. Xue xi de xi. Xue xi. Xi. Oh, I hear the e vowel, which tells me it must actually start with an X. Xue xi de xi. There we are. Let's both do. Because if I have an I vowel and I hear a fricative, like the E sound uh -huh. with a fricative, I know that must be the X. X. This because also... letter I will give U, you know, our little fused vowel for the other one. This is also the family name of Xi Jinping. Oh, the current yeah. Chinese premier. There it is. Xi to study. Accustom oneself to something. Alright, and you want to try the next one? Should I read it? What do you want? Uh, oh. It says ban or bon or something. That should be a bion. bion, I think. Bion. Which would give bien 
Bien. Bien. Yeah. Bien. In modern. Good. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm pleased with myself for guessing, even though I didn't do the tone confidently. Uh, well, I derived this. The one below that is a quite different form in the modern script. Bien is correct. It looks... Oh, dear. Yeah, I don't know what this is. We have the tree, and then the little, that's a person variant, and I don't know what that little two thing is. This is this form is the source of the katakana o. You see it there on the left? Okay. See how it looks like o? Mm -hmm. That's where it comes from. It's now written with fang. It's pronounced yu, and it's sort of an all-purpose preposition. Then it should be three ah. ones below that. Bien uh, um, This could be a uh, compound, although I don't think so. Right, that's right. Er, young, er, yep. Er, young, er, good. The er writes a sentence, actually a fusion of sentence final phrase. So, I mean... Okay, so the rest rates. of this is just explaining what those mean and what they sound like. We presume, let's see. Ah, uh, da So, for sure, nun. Who gives the explanation? And ho nun. Ho. Interesting that it doesn't explain e right away, unless I'm missing it. Okay. E ha or anun. Amo ku e ho nun. Un cha da 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 er z z non. Look at that. We have a cluster there in the writing. But we're ready to go on to the next page. But let's talk about the meaning. Yu wei ci min ran xin zhi er shi ba zi. For that reason, I, taking pity, newly created twenty-eight characters. Yu shi yu shi ren ren yi xi bian yu yu yong er. Desiring to allow people, allow everybody, to easily study for bien, what did we say? Bien. Serve the interest of daily use, and that is all. R -E. Next page starts with ya, the first word. Top right, after two hundred blocks, ya. Transliterated as ah. You there, Leva? Yep. Working on it? Okay, so we have that same glyph to begin. We're on the next page now, right? Next page. We had that before. I'm top. We start at the top of this column with un. 제가 굉장히 피곤해요. 제가 굉장히 피곤해요. 피곤해요. 굉장히. Um, and then uh, that's all. 그것은 good. 상당히 비쌉니다. First two columns of the next page. No? Oh, am I in the wrong place? What? Wait, wait, wait. Maybe. Because of the right to left thing. The page we just did, it's the one to the right of that. Okay. Gets me every time. An. Bien. An. Uh huh. True. All right, you got it. Bien. An. If we are doing, you know, right to left movement on the page, then it should be the other way around, displaying the pages. Would make more sense, be less confusing. So that's what we gotta overcome. Alright. Sa Lum Ma Da Hue 
look at that. We have a double eng or something, or double zero. Su bing. What is that? Oh, you know what? They had special combos for v and f. Su oh yeah. Kyo nalo, and then a cluster su me bie an. Looks good. Or oh, did Bling. An start with a H? That looks like the no, that's a, one with the line over it. I think it's writing a like, glottal kind stop. Kind of like the modern H. Yes, it, I think okay. it's writing a glottal stop. Kun ho go je go ja rather. Something. Okay, don't make it a vowel there in that one. Mm. And then a storo minira. Okay. Then we get a ya, the molar, in column three, near the top. Ya, can you treat that one? Ya. Uh -huh. Okay, so that dot on its own is the vowel o. Sangdangi. Is that I right? So. Yes, that's my impression. Ya is correct. Molar. Oh, if this means molar, yeah. I think, does this row start with that kiyok? And so it's talking about the kiyok one. Oh, there you go, yeah. Kiyok nun a ya in i ni yo zyo jun. Okay, and then it's got good yin the sound. You, I, you've nailed it. Yeah, I didn't spot that. Kiok for velars. And then it's got a tigut. Zu. Shu. Hu. And what is that? Something. Sheng. There's one I can't parse. Bing. Shu. Ru. Jiu. Zu. Shu. Something. Sheng. It looks a bit like. Tong. I start with a TC. What characters do I get? Ah, uh, let's go to the express one. It starts with a T and ends with a K. So maybe we can find it that way. <laughs> Wish it would work. Anyway, after in two syllables below that, we get the next hanja. Let's get me kind of found. Leave right there. Yep. There Here's right. two more. Hanja. There you go. So Jin, of course, in Mandarin no longer has a velar initial, but it used to. It's shifted to a power. Okay. No, I didn't know these two really comp... Oop, I'm missing one more. Let me get you one more, then I'll make this comment. The one at the end of this. Looks like the tree and then the knife. No, it's not a tree, it's clothing. It's also oh. a zu there, and it may be with a tigut. Jin zu or something. Yeah. This could be in. Yeah, if it were a hanja, I would have a little pronouncer with it, but it doesn't. Oh, 
people have a difficulty getting that one. The one that has the clothing and then the knife. Can you say it? Chu. 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 Oh, yes, there it is. I've seen that before. It means beginning. Hajimemashite. Okay. Yes, now these next two are very dense and I don't know what they are. The ones pronounced bol and xia. Uh, it's actually sheng, I think. The sheng I recognize, okay. and you, if I just say sheng, you can probably find it. Right? Sheng. What does it look like? Okay, we got something on the back and something on the right. Both the tails, but Don't ear on the, the bottom. Yep. It's got an ear on the bottom. Shung. Well, what is it to have? Well, I'm seeing a lot of unfamiliar stuff here. Well, it's a pretty big language. Big dictionary for Chinese. The Shang is correct. Oh, I think I know what that is, actually. Yeah, one of these. Okay. Oh, I think I know what that. I think this is fa with an alternate form. Okay. Fa sheng. This. Fa... Yeah, yeah. That would give bol. It's just a. Yeah. So fa is written. This maybe the. N o n a g. Maybe the next one. I'm going to just bracket it because I'm not too, too sure. What's that? Uh, close. That is ya, though. Look at the top part of the character. It starts with a T stroke or T component. And that oh, one's a maybe. modern simplified form. Oh, okay. Not a traditional. Let me know if you want it pronounced, though. I'm happy to. Oh, please do. Yes, that will help. It is pronounced mm -hmm. Bing. Bing. Great. There it is, sure here's, enough. Okay. Here's how I read that really hard to parse one. I think it is a Fa. Bing is there, yeah. Okay. Oh, so each row is talking about each letter. So it's Maybe. the Keok ones and then the good ones. Seems a good working hypothesis. So why is this one in square brackets? When you say this one... Uh, you... you have given one... Oh, because two, I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. But it seems a good guess, based on the Korean reading, and on the shape, and for, with the meaning, to emit sound. Chu Fa Sheng Bing all right, what comes after Bing? This one you should know. Although it's a little condensed, it might be hard to recognize. Well, I see like the writing hand on top with the brush, and it's on top of the day. Apparently. Yeah. Historically not, but they coincide. Oh. Do you remember it? Thing. Let me give it a try. What do you call a book in Mandarin? Yes. Shu. Shu. Jiu shi. Jiu shi shu. Dui. Bing shu. So bing means besides, moreover. Shu originally was a verb to write, as in Chinese, as in Japanese, it writes kaku. Uh, and then 
This is the insect and then the four looking thing that's in Jia. So, you can, yeah, I think it's pronounced Jiu, but I don't know what this means. I'm going to look it up. It looks like it starts with two kioks. Young dragon with horns. Twisted. Miserly. I don't think it's put here for meaning. I think it's because it's saying Shu Zhu Jiu. What's the sound? Chiu. Okay, rising with aspirate initial. Shu Zhu Chiu means written like this Chiu character. Uh, and I think it's talking about the syllable ni, which occurs right before bing. Okay. Okay, I think we need to include Korean writing in in the sentence, or else it will be meaningless. Okay. The, right? Kiok. Oh, it's the Kyok the four part of the of this. The four part, the, the second, the right hand half of this is ni. Looks like me. Yeah, it's saying it's spelled like me, written the same as that. It's writing approaches me. Sheng ho ni bing shu ho mian mian zhu qiu. Okay, and the reading given is a little hard to see, but it looks like a Q. It could be a Q. And then a complex initial. F or V, I think. Or it could be a... V up with a circle. Yeah, what is that? Fa zi chu fa sheng ho ni ra. All ones we've seen before. Ho ni zi chu fa sheng. The hanja, yeah, we've encountered before. And the next page... The left hand one. Exactly. I was able to recall it this time. Tiga zi. It's talking more about that. Cha zum. Pyo a na. Nun. Sori. Ko to ni. Kul. Va. Sumyun. When you write, looks like Korean verb there. Chiu and a V or something F or V Zi Chuo Zong Pyo Ge Te Ni Ra Go To Ni Ra And then Ya Yin Ju Kuai Okay, and then it's going to talk about that circle above the sorry line above circle character. So before the character Zi in these ones, it's talking about the written mark. Remember he mentioned 28, mm -hmm. and here he's breaking them down. So this is, these are Chinese sentences incorporating bits of Hangul. Okay. Kiok nun ya in ini ru jun tige zi chu fa sheng something ni, so yeah, di ni, maybe the common shape. An articulation of the D letter and the N letter. Bing Shu Hu Myun Shu Ru Chiu And then P up circle Zi Chu Fa Sheng Hu Ni Ra A little hard to follow. <laughs> Kiok is another molar sound. Right? Oh, and then we have the line over the circle. Uh, I don't think it is a molar sound. I'm not sure where you are, though. I think he's briefly oh. briefly outlining velars, dentals, labials as the three important places of articulation. Okay. Then annotation. 
which is clearly indicated by the smaller font size. Uh, we have the old word gul, spelled G O L, gul. Kunigul vasumion chiu. Vatu chosum pio. Ananun. Sori. Linko tonira. Konun. Okay, and then it introduces the aspirate. Kiok. Do you see it? The center of the mm -hmm. left page, center column? Yes, I do. All right, we're getting somewhere. Okay, so it looks like a Tigat. There's other places. Maybe it's just talking about the K consonant. And then it's going to get two. Or maybe it does treat of all three, but then back to the velars, because those come later in the, alphabet, in the alphabetical order. Kwai. The example kwai, meaning fast, has an aspirate, as opposed to jun, which has a plain stop. And then it's circle, line circle character. Zi chu fa sheng hu ni ra. Ke nen om so ri ni kuai. Something zi cho zong cho a na nen. So ri go to ni ra. And then it comes, okay, and then we get one of the, another circle diacritic. This could be glottal stop. Zhu ya in zhu fa zi zhu fa sheng. When he gets, gives an example, it will become clearer. O nun om so ri ni fa zi cha zom pyo ana nun so ri go to ni ra. Tigat looks like nun. Shu in is a tongue sound. Ini zhu dao. Yep, that's a dental, plain dental initial. La zi chu fa sheng. And then H, hiot. Ni bing shu. Umyon zhu. Uh, something. Hard to see what that character is. Oh, it's a dan single. And then le next page, I gotta click over, and it's the left side. Okay, we just did a lot of understanding, but how is our notes? Oh, it's coming. Tan. How Do I need to gather any more characters? How are our notes coming? Right. Do I, I need to think, gather any more characters? I think we've got a good stopping point. Let's end it there. We went an hour okay. and 40. Let me just uh, recap. I'll just paste everything. I we think you have about. a mistake, though. Okay. Uh, I think... Oh, I forgot the name of this one. Let's see if it's still my opinion. For... They don't really have names, uh, but they have readings. Uh, readings, sorry. Uh, Which but, line in my transcription? Uh, the... The last one, it the should be one. about broken. It should be broken about halfway, and the the second half of it refers to ni. Aha. Okay. So after tigut, tu. Yeah, in that tigut line, about halfway. So the character after the one in brackets ends the first, Shun. and then. This, Fa this one that I bing. Oh yeah, it's about ni. You're right. This one onward is about ni. Yeah. Bing. Okay, let me add ni to the line. Ni bing shu ru qiu. Right? Did I put that in the right place? Ni mm -hmm. bing. There we go, yeah. Yun. Zhu qiu zi. That makes sense. Chu fa sheng hu ni ra.
Okay. So a lot of this now is getting to be a lot of the same characters over yeah. and over. Yeah, it's doing, yeah, it's introducing the different graphemes, I suppose. The deco, I, so I pasted all of today's assembled text in one block. Hope it got okay. through. I will bring it to the document. Okay. And let's end it there. Maybe we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, sounds like a winner. Hey, 안녕히 계세요. 안녕히 계세요.